Did you know that most of what you've seen, read, or heard about Billy the Kid is untrue? My name is Gail Cooper. I'm a medical doctor and forensic psychiatrist. My specialty is murder case consultation for the defense. For 20 years, I've used my expertise to uncover the real Billy the Kid. Researching over 40,000 pages of archival documents and books, I've written The Revisionist History. It's shocking, it's liberating. And I've written books demolishing the hoaxes, hijacking the history. My talks will share with you what I've found. Cover-ups, misinformation, and fakery, to use Old West lingo, will bite the dust. This talk summarizes my Billy the Kid books. Their intent, like my intent in these talks, is to arm you with powerful evidence. The books have complete archival documents and bibliographies with my thousands of sources, and their facts will immunize you to charlatans hoaxing Billy Bonnie. As I discussed in my talk summarizing the history, New Mexico Territory's 1870s flared with grassroots rebellions against the land-grabbing political cabal known as the Santa Fe Ring. In that decade, Ringites were infiltrating territorial government and law enforcement and creating mercantile and ranching monopolies. The 1878 Lost Lincoln County War, the last and bloodiest uprising, was made famous by its teenage hero, Billy Bonney, demonized by the ring as Billy the Kid. The freedom fights may have been crushed, and the freedom fighters reduced by ring propaganda to mere outlaws, but the voices of the anti-ring fighters lived on in their depositions, court testimonies, petitions to the president, pamphlets, newspaper articles, and letters. And speaking through time is Billy Bonney himself as he confronted the ring by his letters, deposition, pardon-seeking, court testimonies, and interviews. The history books are my novel, Billy and Paulita, and my nonfiction books, Billy the Kid's Writings, Words, and Wit, The Santa Fe Ring versus Billy the Kid, The Lost Pardon of Billy the Kid, and The Coroner's Jury Report of Billy the Kid. Billy and Paulita, subtitled The Saga of Billy the Kid, Paulita Maxwell, and The Santa Fe Ring, was my first book, Revealing the Real History. I described its inspiration in my lecture titled, My Adventures with Billy the Kid, now on my playlist. My goal was bringing to life the star-crossed romance of Billy Bonney and young heiress Paulina Maxwell against the backdrop of the lost Lincoln County War freedom fight against the Santa Fe Ring. For it, I not only did extensive research, but also recreated the scenes in their historic sites and interviewed descendants of historical characters. Though Billy is killed by the ring at the end, he triumphs by completing his hero journey as he wanted, free till the end. Billy the Kid's writings, words, and wit gives all known communications of Billy Bonney. They demonstrate his brilliance, literacy, pursuit of justice, and unquenchable ironic humor. Most grew out of the Lincoln County War Freedom fight and his subsequent outlawing by the Santa Fe Ring. Included is analysis of his uniquely modified Spencerian handwriting, 
There is his complete deposition to Washington, D.C. investigator Frank Warner Angel about witnessing the murder of John H. Tunstall. His pardon plea letters to Governor Lew Wallace include reproductions of all the originals. And there is Wallace's interview of him. Discussed is Billy's expurgated 1879 grand jury testimony against the murderers of attorney Houston Chapman. Present is his entire testimony for the prosecution in the court of inquiry for possible court martial of Fort Stand Commander N.A.M. Dudley. There is Billy's letter to attorney Edgar Capeless about appealing his death sentence, and there are his newspaper interviews taunting his unjust prosecution and withheld pardon. A bonus is my authentication of a new Billy the Kid letter to Governor Lou Wallace about Lincoln County war matters. All show that Billy was a freedom fighter, not an outlaw. The Santa Fe Ring versus Billy the Kid, subtitled The Making of an American Monster, presents for the first time ever the unvarnished villainous history of New Mexico's Santa Fe Ring, begun in 1866 by attorneys Thomas Benton Catron and Stephen Benton Elkins. As to the making of an American monster subtitle, it refers to the rise to power of the moral monstrosities in the ring, as well as the ring's manufacturing of the monster outlaw, Billy the Kid, as cover-up. Traced through their whole criminal careers are ring co-bosses Catron and Elkins, as well as their Lincoln County War minions, all untouched by justice and portrayed for the first time, with some name by me, our New Mexico territory's crushed freedom fights against the ring. Santa Fe's 1872 legislature revolt tried to pass bills stopping ring takeover of the judiciary. The 1876 Grant County Rebellion attempted secession to Arizona to escape the ring. The 1877 Colfax County War had Maxwell land grant settlers fighting the ring's illegal seizure of their land. And the 1878 Lincoln County War, which Billy Bonney made famous, had citizens pitted against the ring and the military. Also featured are unsung anti-ring fighters, adding to those of the Lincoln County War. There are ring-murdered Colfax County War leader, Reverend Franklin Tolby, firebrand petitioner and pamphleteer, Mary Tibbles McPherson, journalist, Raymond Morley, and New Mexico Territory Governor, Miguel Otero. Revealed also is the ring's expansion through the 19th century by briberies, vote fixings, malicious prosecutions, defamations, and murders of opponents. It all worked. No ringite was ever punished for their crimes, and ring boss Catron was appointed as one of the first two senators at New Mexico's 1912 statehood. And in 1921, Catron County was created branding the state's map to this day with injustice, provided our complete text of the 19th century communications, secret ring cipher codes, petitions, exposés, pamphlets, legal papers, and newspaper articles. Added is the modern Santa Fe Ring's 21st century profiteering Billy the Kid case hoax, which hijacked Billy's history. It is also exposed in my book, Cracking the Billy the Kid Case Hoax. The Lost Pardon of Billy the Kid, subtitled An Analysis Factoring in 
the Santa Fe Ring, Governor Lou Wallace's dilemma, and a territory in rebellion, explains why New Mexico Territory Governor Lou Wallace denied Billy Bonney's promised pardon. Key is the role of the Santa Fe Ring, and my psychological analysis of Wallace adds perspective. Presented also is Billy's lost second pardon chance through the Secret Service, again blocked by the ring. Provided a text of original communications, legal papers, and newspaper articles. Included are hoaxes recycling Billy's pardon request. I also debunk them in my books about the brushy Bill Roberts imposter hoax and the Billy the Kid case hoax. The coroner's jury report of Billy the Kid, subtitled The Inquest That Sealed the Fame of Billy Bonney and Pat Garrett, gives the history of William H. Bonney's July 15, 1881, coroner's jury report documenting his killing by Sheriff Pat Garrett on July 14, 1881. It sealed a fateful moment in Old West history, and it marked the Santa Fe Ring's elimination of the last regulator. Presented is a certified copy of this three-page Spanish-language report, as well as its translation. Its storage is traced from its recipient, District Attorney of the First Judicial District, William Breeden, to its 20th century rediscoveries in Santa Fe public records. This book is fatal to the Billy the Kid imposter hoaxes of men like Brushy Bill Roberts and John Miller, who claim to be surviving Billy the Kid by denying that Billy was killed by Pat Garrett and by lying that this report did not exist. My hoax-busting books cover the main 20th and 21st century hoaxes which hijack Billy the Kid history. They are cracking the Billy the Kid imposter hoax of Brushy Bill Roberts, Billy the Kid's pretender John Miller, cracking the Billy the Kid case hoax, the cold case Billy the Kid mega hoax, the Billy the Kid's bad bucks hoax, and Blandina Segali, the nun who rode on Billy the Kid. Cracking the Billy the Kid imposter hoax of Brushy Bill Roberts demolishes this elaborate hoax that has endured from the mid-20th century to the present. It claimed that Brushy Bill as Billy the Kid survived Pat Garrett's shooting on July 14, 1881 because Garrett shot Brushy's fictional partner named Billy Barlow instead, and it lied that the coroner's jury report of Billy the Kid did not exist. In actuality, Oliver Pleasant Roberts, self-named Brushy Bill, was born in 1879 and was not even two at Billy Bonney's 1881 killing. He was mentally ill, vocationally disabled, and cared for by his family and wives. Billy the Kid was just one of his multiple delusional personas. But he was promoted by a huckster named William V. Morrison, a salesman who impersonated an attorney. Morrison failed in his 1950 profiteering publicity stunt to get a modern New Mexico governor's pardon for Brushy as Billy but after Brushy died, Morrison continued the hoax with a 1955 book titled Alias Billy the Kid, written with a fellow hoaxing author named C.L. Sonnershin. This book exposes the error-filled prompting sources used by Brushy Bill, Morrison, and Sonnershin to create his Billy the Kid persona proved is Brushy's lack of any special knowledge and his fatal errors. Referenced are also Brushy's family members who revealed him as an imposter. Later Brushy Bill hoaxes to the present 
are also debunked. They evolved with ever-increasing fakery as their authors surreptitiously added Billy the Kid history discovered after Brushy's day by forging Brushy's original transcripts to fake his so-called special knowledge of Billy the Kid. Covered too is the 21st century forensic DNA hoax to fake Brushy as Billy, which is also debunked in my book, Cracking the Billy the Kid Case Hoax. Billy the Kid's pretender, John Miller, debunks a minor early 20th century Billy the Kid imposter named John Miller, who claimed that Sheriff Pat Garrett killed his Native American partner, mistaken for him as Billy. This hoax was continued by a Helen Airy in her 1993 book titled, Whatever Happened to Billy the Kid? In it, Airy hid that Miller was born in 1850, almost a decade before Billy Bonney, making him no kid in the Lincoln County War and not 21 on July 14, 1881. Also hidden is that Miller knew no Billy the Kid history. For proof, Airy just cited Miller's friends saying he told them he was the kid. This hoax is noteworthy only because it was recycled in the early 21st century in the gigantic Billy the Kid case hoax, claiming that DNA would prove that John Miller or Brushy Bill Roberts had been Billy the Kid. The DNA claims were fake, but that had not stopped the hoaxers from digging up John Miller for bogus DNA matching for a planned profiteering TV documentary. I also expose the John Miller hoax in my book, Cracking the Billy the Kid Case Hoax. Cracking the Billy the Kid Case Hoax, subtitled The Strange Plot to Exhume Billy the Kid, Convict Sheriff Pat Garrett of Murder, and Become President of the United States, debunks arguably the biggest historic forensic hoax ever perpetrated. It tried to fake that Billy the Kid imposter, Brushy Bill Roberts, was Billy the Kid. For filler, it added Billy the Kid imposter, John Miller. At stake was the real history of Billy the Kid. Ironically, this hoax, begun in 2003, was done by the modern Santa Fe Ring, again trying to destroy the real Billy the Kid, as had the original Ring. Colluding in this caper were New Mexico's unscrupulous publicity-seeking governor, profiteering New Mexico lawmen, the historian of the U.S. Marshal Service, a state-funded university professor as official historian and creator of their 2004 hoax-promoting TV program, the governor's brushy-believing political donor, a so-called lawyer for Billy the Kid, an editor of a glossy Old West magazine, and New Mexico Press. Their forensic expert for their fake DNA investigation was notorious Dr. Henry Lee. Their self-named Billy the Kid case claimed that Sheriff Pat Garrett didn't kill Billy the Kid on July 14, 1881, but instead viciously murdered an innocent victim to fill the Fort Sumner grave so Billy could escape. Real filed Sheriff's Department murder cases were opened against Garrett to justify exhuming Billy the Kid and his mother, Catherine Antrim. Intended was faking their DNA mismatch to make up that Garrett's innocent victim was in Billy's grave, not Billy. Then, Brushy Bill was to be awarded a posthumous governor's pardon as Billy the Kid for having led a long and law-abiding life. Kept secret was that the graves were just tourist markers without valid DNA. 
Billy the Kid DNA was also faked from an old carpenter's bench as an excuse to dig up Billy the Kid imposter John Miller for fake matching. But since Miller's Arizona grave was unmarked, the adjoining corpse was dug up also. His name was William Hudspeth. These multiple felonies were concealed by the hoaxers and colluding Arizona public officials. And kept secret was that the carpenter's bench had yielded no DNA at all to match with anyone. Provided are the texts of all the hoax documents and press. This book is also my memoir of fighting the Santa Fe ring. I saved real Billy the Kid history by court cases blocking the exhumations of Billy and his mother, then by my open records litigation, which got the hoaxers faked and forged DNA records. And I got firsthand experience of fighting a dangerous rigged system. It added to my admiration and sympathy for the 19th century anti-ring freedom fighters, including Billy Bonney. The cold case, Billy the Kid Mega Hoax, subtitled The Plot to Steal Billy the Kid's Identity and Defame Sheriff Pat Garrett as a Murderer, debunks the rerun of Billy the Kid imposter hoaxes of Brushy Bill Roberts and John Miller with new hoaxes added in a 2018 book titled Cold Case Billy the Kid. The fakery, which hides the coroner's jury report of Billy the Kid proving his killing, makes up that Billy's alleged death was really a cold case murder because Sheriff Pat Garrett killed an innocent victim instead of him and was never prosecuted for that crime. Multiple fake investigations are offered to claim that history was wrong. The writers were in the earlier Billy the Kid case hoax, which they now hid, while recycling its fake Dr. Henry Lee forensics. They also used so-called Dr. Lee's reports, which were apparently the forgeries created for my open records litigation in the Billy the Kid case. So my book, Cracking the Billy the Kid Case Hoax, also applies to this rerun. Provided are all the documents exposing the hoaxing. The Billy the Kid's Bad Bucks Hoax, subtitled Faking Billy Bonnie as a William Brockway Gang Counterfeiter, debunks a new Billy the Kid hoax, appearing in 2010 and 2015 articles and in the 2018 book titled Cold Case Billy the Kid. This hoax made up a satanically evil Billy the Kid rustler who was in alliance with New York City counterfeiter William Brockway. This Billy also despicably murdered a freight driver who dared report him as a counterfeiter to the Secret Service. The writers were Billy the Kid case hoaxers in the early 2000s, making up that Sheriff Pat Garrett never killed Billy the Kid. I debunked that hoax in my book, Cracking the Billy the Kid case hoax. This hoax's MO was to use obscure National Archive documents about Billy the Kid's late 1880 pursuit by Secret Service Special Operative Azariah Wild and unrelated obscure Secret Service documents about pursuit of counterfeiter William Brockway. The text was also lifted out of context from Pat Garrett's 1882 book the Authentic Life of Billy the Kid. To fake the connection of Billy Bonney and Brockway, these sources were misstated. The hoaxer's obvious bet was that no one would check the originals. I did. Further fake evidence was a random counterfeit bill gotten from the National Archives 
pretended was that it came from Azariah Wild's investigation and proved Billy was a counterfeiter. Billy the Kid's murdering a freighter was lifted from Outlaw Myth Press, but the freighter's being an informer on Billy was made up for this hoax. In truth, that freighter, named Sam Smith, was killed by Apaches months before Azariah Wild's Secret Service investigation and had nothing to do with Billy the Kid or Wild. Included in the book are the actual documents about which the hoaxers lied to fabricate their so-called evidence. Blandina Segali, the nun who rode on Billy the Kid, subtitled Sleuthing a Foisted Frontier Fable, presents the earliest and weirdest Billy the Kid imposter hoax as perpetrated by a Sisters of Charity of Cincinnati frontier missionary nun named Blandina Segali, who impersonated being a participant in Billy the Kid history in articles and in a 1932 book titled At the End of the Santa Fe Trail. In her day, dime novel style publications were only available sources like Pat Garrett's 1882, The Authentic Life of Billy the Kid, and Walter Noble Burns's 1926, The Saga of Billy the Kid. So she lifted their telltale falsehoods to build her lies about her fake Billy the Kid. And she added her own spin with an evil Colorado highwayman, outlaw Billy the Kid, who scalped people for revenge. Though real Billy was not in Colorado, nor was he a highwayman, nor was he a scalper, but impersonating a heroine, Blandina saves people from this scary Billy by bringing out his better side with her spiritual powers. Her lies are made more intriguing by the fact that she is currently in the running for sainthood. Using her quotes, I demonstrated the sources from which she lifted them to create her hoax, and I hypothesized about her psychological need to create her fantasies. My talks to follow will give you these books' specifics about the real Billy Bonnie and about the hoaxers hijacking him.